Hi Bethel friends and visitors. My name is Rachel Croffitt. I am the Children's Director here at Bethel Assembly of God and we are continuing our online kids church this week and we are in the midst of our new unit called Faith Fails and we've been talking about people in the Bible who have failed. Maybe really big and maybe sometimes more than once and we're looking at how they failed but also how God still used them in big ways and that just because we fail doesn't mean that we're useless but that God can use us in big ways and with this unit we have our memory verse I'll put it up here for you and it says the Lord takes good care of all those who fall he lifts us up all those who feel helpless Psalms 145 14. So I hope you are continuing to practice that and learn it and my activity idea for you to practice your memory verse this week is to set it to a tune of a song. Maybe you can pick out your favorite song or one as simple as Mary had a little lamb or the ABCs and sing the memory verse. I know some people are very musically inclined and it helps them to sing words and it helps them to memorize them that way. So give it a try this week. Uh, you can record yourself doing it and send me a little video. Um, and also whenever you have your memory verse memorized, uh, send me a video uh, with your parents approval that shows you practicing your memory verse. So with this unit, we've been talking about fail videos. And some of the, the wildest and craziest and scariest fails on the internet are fails that involve animals. Many times these videos start out with people involved doing something extremely foolish, like crossing into an animal's territory or even taunting an animal. Of course, things never go the way that people in the video expect. Wild animals are wild animals, with instincts and behaviors that ordinary people are ill-equipped to handle. So the next thing you know, goats are chasing people up trees, or deers are charging and attacking cars, or, or seals are yanking iPhones out of people's hands because they don't want their picture taken. When someone suffers a serious fail, especially involving a wild animal, they usually walk away a little wiser. By wiser, I mean smart enough to never do that again. They treat those animals with a lot more respect, and they turn away from acting recklessly in front of animals. The Bible has a word for that, turning away from bad decisions and bad fails and going the other direction. The word is repent. Repent means you're not going to do something ever again. You turn around and you go the other way, God's way. There's something that reminds me of this. And you can see here, I'm sure you know what this is. You've had one or gotten a prize. It's called a yo-yo. So you won't see a yo-yo in too many fail videos, but they pop up from time to time. But most of the time, if you see a yo-yo, you're going to see someone who knows what they're doing. People can do amazing tricks with yo-yos, but the one thing you always see, unless they mess up, is the yo-yo returning to the hand that holds the string. A yo-yo may go far and take some crazy around the world loops, but it always turns back and returns to the hand of its master. Let's see if I can demonstrate this. I'm not very good at yo-yoing, but can it usually at least do it once? Yep. But when you yo-yo and you do it correctly, it goes down and then it comes back up. It does take some practice, and I need to practice apparently, on how to yo-yo. But this reminds us of repentance. Repentance, repentance means turning away from sin and turning back to God. When you repent, you stop going towards your fail. You stop doing the things that cause you to sin. You go God's way. You go the other way, just like the yo-yo. God will always forgive our fails, but forgiveness comes when we repent. 
If you're at the end of your rope, if you're tired of failing, it's time to go the other way. Repent. Go back to God. He's waiting for you to turn from sin so he can give you a second chance. So all throughout this series, we have used this word, repent, and we've told you that God will forgive our sins and give us a second chance if we are willing to repent. So today we're going to read a story about a wild animal and a man who learned a hard lesson about the need to repent and do things God's way. His name is Jonah. And I'm sure you've probably heard the story of Jonah, but we are going to read it today. And Jonah is found in the Bible. It's in the Old Testament. It's towards the end of the Old Testament, just before you get to the New Testament. So we're going to read Jonah chapter 1. So if you want to read along with me, we're going to start Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed to Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he fell down, or I'm sorry, he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us, that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them, and they asked, What have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord, because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, What should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and make vows to him. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. God gave Jonah a very clear and specific command. Go preach to Nineveh. Nineveh was a really wicked city that did not believe in God. And ironically, God wanted Jonah to go and tell them to repent. Instead of following God's directions, though, Jonah ran in the opposite direction. He got on a boat and sailed bound for a port as far away from Nineveh as he could get. God wasn't about to let Jonah get away. God blocked Jonah's path with a terrible storm and a giant fish. In the end, it was Jonah who had to repent. Jonah knew he had failed God and he knew he didn't deserve a second chance. But when Jonah prayed for forgiveness and repented of his mistake, God turned the fish around and put Jonah back on course. 
So let's read the next chapter of Jonah, which is Jonah chapter 2, and hear what happened. So Jonah chapter 2, starting at verse 1. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the sea, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me, seaweed wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred, barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed. I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. So to repent means to turn away from sin and go God's way. God wants us to repent so that we can live for him and live a life as free from fails as possible. Repentance is one of the easiest and one of the hardest things for us to do. It's easy because, well, it's just as simple as turning around at the end of your block and walking back to your house. You ask God for forgiveness. You say, God, I'm sorry for my fail. Please forgive me. Then you turn around and you walk away from that sin. Simple, right? Well, yes and no. It's simple because a prayer for forgiveness will bring forgiveness. But the hardest part is staying the course once we've turned around. We've already seen from the stories of Abraham, Sarah, and Samson how hard it is not to turn back and sin again. But we've also seen that when we are humble, God will forgive us, even after failing him many, many times. God doesn't want any of us to perish in our sin, and if we place our trust in God, he will help us keep our backs to sin once we repent. God gave us the Bible to teach us right and wrong. He gave us prayer so we can communicate with him directly and pray for strength to resist temptation. He gave us fellow Christians to encourage us to stay true to God and stay away from sin. Repentance is easy and hard, and it's something we will all continue to do until the day we meet Jesus in heaven. If we repent, repent God will forgive he will show us the way to go and lead us away from sin. He can give us the strength and wisdom to turn away and sin no more. But he will always forgive again when we stumble. Repentance means we are changing our direction to live God's way. Let's repent. Let's turn from those sins. Let's ask God for his help to lead us away from failure and into the good life he has planned for us. So let's pray together. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can ask for repentance and we can ask for forgiveness and know that it is being given to us, Lord. We ask for strength right now to resist any of those temptations, any of those sins, and to turn the other, dire the other direction and turn towards you, Lord. We ask you to be with each and every person out there. Give them the strength that they need, Lord, to live their life for you. In Jesus' name, amen. So since we were talking about um, repentance and the, the yo-yos and how it means turning back towards God, that's a challenge I have for you this week. So search in your house. Ask your mom. She probably knows where one is. Um, where you can find a yo-yo um, that you can practice. Maybe you can learn some tricks, um, how to get the yo-yo the to spin around. And there's all kinds of neat things that you can do. And you know, 
where to look for them. You can ask your mom or dad and you can find a YouTube video, I'm sure, that will tell you how to do different yo-yo tricks. So that's my challenge for you this week. And, and while you're yo-yoing, um, you can think about how good it is that God gives us this forgiveness and that we can repent just by asking. So let's find out what we learned about today. So here's a little review game. You're going to fill in the blanks. All right, the first one is blank was a prophet of God. That's right, Jonah. Jonah was a prophet of God and that's why he was having him do and give him the command that he gave him, which leads us to the next one. God told Jonah to go to the city of blank. Do you remember what it was called? Nineveh. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. Jonah got on a blank going away from Nineveh. Remember the opposite direction. Yes, he got on a boat going away from Nineveh. Next one. To blank means to turn away from our sin and go the other way. What's our keyword for today? Repent. To repent means to turn away from our sin and go the other way. The last one, Jonah repented when he spent three days in the belly of a what? Yes, a fish, a very large fish. So Jonah learned repentance the hard way, um, but it's not that hard for us today, right? We talked about how all it takes is a simple prayer, asking for forgiveness, and then asking for strength to stay away from that sin and turn the other way. Well, that is all for today. I look forward to uh, seeing some yo-yo tricks out there. So if you have your yo-yo, be sure to, to start doing your tricks and, and sending them over so I can see your videos. And I look forward to talking with you again next week. God bless.